the national anthem. Just a wonderful rendition of the ch of the uh, national anthem. The Chonset High School band out in their official inclement weather gear. The Lowell, Lowell High School band is here with us tonight. They'll be performing during halftime. Our officials tonight. Wow, is that loud tonight for some reason? Yeah, Larry what, what we have is Larry LaFon. tonight. Headlines is uh, Brian, uh, one of, a couple of the speakers, two of the speakers broke, and uh, they had to use substitute speakers, and these ones are just concert amplifiers. Substitute speakers, is that like, uh, oh, I guess I won't go there. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, da Jeff Stout and Dan Kachouf is here. We're at Alumni Stadium. It's Friday, October 9th, the second home game in Alliance, and it's just a, uh, depending on how your view is, it could be considered a miserable night, but... An excellent night for a muddy ground game type of football. As you see the captains coming off the uh, center of the field. The uh, weather, it's, I'd say about, it's about 55, 60 degrees, Dan. Uh, yeah, it's about that. It's uh, alternating between a light mist and a, and a light rain here. The field's wet. We've had rain for the last couple of days. It's going to be interesting to see how that affects the ground game tonight. Ronnie Rosario from Lowell, who uh, came in uh, late in the game last year where we were at Cauley Stadium, uh, which Lions won, uh, I believe, uh, quite effective on the outside. Ronnie Rosario for long Sunday decathlon team. He's quite fast around the end, Dan. How much of a fact do you think that's going to be? Well, uh, rumor has it that uh, Ronnie Rosario can only run to one side because he only has one eye. Well, the, I actually have met Ronnie a couple of times. Uh, Jim DeProfio, Chelmsford class of 82, uh, coaches their winter track team over there, and uh, Ronnie's on his uh, decathlon team. And I had a chance to meet Ronnie over the summer, and I, I think that is the, the case. So I recall last year he ran all the time to the right. Right, that's his, that's his side that he has to run to. But, and, uh, you know, I think this today we're going to have Chelmsford um, at this point. You know, they're going to... They're going to load up on one side and see what happens. Well, unfortunately, the case seems to be so far this year. Chelmsford's uh, having a great time of stopping the run between the tackles, but we seem to run into problems when we're heading to the outside. It certainly does seem to be the problem. I mean, it's, it's a problem that we've had all year, but uh, I, think, I think that's one of the things that they're going to work on. I think a lot of the problem last week was not around the ends, which, you know, there was there was problems around the end, but it's just the Central Catholic offensive line just did a great job last week. Well, the other thing to be considered, and I, it's just a question, I, I don't think it's come down to if anymore, but it's when in the game is one of the officials going to make a bogus call against the Lions. We should start a pool. Well, actually, I, I looked at that uh, play where they let him into the end zone, and it was a good call. What it, what it was is we were looking at the pylon. The pylon was three yards deep in the end zone. Uh, it's never a good and call if it's against the Lions. Just made it over the line. It was a pretty good call. Slow motion, forward, reverse, everything. It was still a good call. Humbug. You listen to the Chelmsford High School band play the Chelmsford High fight song as we're getting ready to start this event. And they're still not off the field. Lowell High's ready to go. <laughs> the referees the looking. The officials. <laughs> We're at USC here today. 
<laughs> just uh, off offline, Dan and I were joking about that uh, often played shot of the USC uh, football game where the band was late getting off the field, and one of the players was run one of the bandsmen was run over by one of the players uh, inadvertently, of course, coming out onto the field. So you see the Chelmsford High School band marching off now. We're getting ready to start this action against the Little Red Raiders. Certainly, it could be like the Dukes of Hazard song. Uh, the day the music died, the marching band refused to yield. <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh, well, it's a great night for football. Yeah, this is what I call a John Madden night. Lots of mud and dirt and grass and all kinds of good stuff. And uh, Jack Fletcher, the athletic director, uh, he uh, concerned that the uh, field might get torn up a bit from this rain. Uh, Phil gets torn up from using it too much. Uh, Jeff Smart kicking off, getting ready to kick off for the Lions. A new kicker. They, they used him last week. It's going to be Rosario, and it looks like 87 not on the front side of the roster. It's kind of a line drive kick taken by... Taken 30. by Kevin Erlet. And he's ahead. Oh, my gosh. He breaks free up to the 41-42 yard line. 41 yard line. Kevin Willett. And we'll get to see the Lowell High offense coming up. Dan Sullivan. It's going to be interesting to see how, uh, excuse me, how uh, Chelmsford can uh, take care of Ronnie Rosario. The Lowell quarterback, number seven, Adam Michaud. Michaud working over the center, split backs, uh, wide left, split uh, wing right. There's the handoff to Ronnie Rosario. Ronnie Rosario heading uh, to his right, uh, the far side of the field, the low side. Carried by number 20, Ronnie Rosario. And not getting very much room, only about a yard gain on that play. Chelmsford defense, you know, probably two, expecting first play of the game to go with Rosario. Whalen checking out for Lowell. Michaud working with the I formation. Too tight. Michaud looking to throw. He's under pressure. He barely gets it off. Not even close to the intended receiver, number eight, James Herbauer. What a play by Matt Coder. The defensive end for the Chelmsford Lions just getting in unevaded and just laying it on Adam Michaud. And, oh, boy, that must have hurt. The Lions defense uh, looking good so far this evening. It's early. It's, uh, in case you're just tuning in, 9 10 left to go in the first quarter here. George Simone Alumni Stadium. Chelmsford High School hosting the Little High Red Raiders. Michaud again brings him out. He'll have three backs in the backfield. Split left. Michaud looks like he's in the shotgun here. Oh, that is Michaud in the shotgun. So Michaud looking to throw. He's back deep. He's under pressure. He's got a screen. Number five. Jason Houston. Trips over his own player there. Lowell getting the first down on the screen. That was very well executed, Dan. It certainly was. They got their blocks up back, drew the defenders, drew the uh, front defenders in toward the uh, quarterback. And as he did, they just dumped it off to uh, number five, uh, Jason Houston, who took it for uh, about a 15, 18-yard gain. Michaud again over center with the split backs, working from the Chumsford 40-yard line, first and 10. Everyone up close for the lines, expecting the run here. Houston uh, rambling down for another low first down. Low running the inside Number trap five, play. Jason Houston. Uh, just a you know, great, great run, great screen executed by by the uh, Lowell High Red Raiders and just getting through. I didn't think that Chelmsford player, uh, defensive players even knew that uh, Houston had the ball. Now very well executed. Lowell looks like a sharp football squad here this year. They do. It looks like they have a very small team though in terms of their numbers. I mean Chelmsford has a lot more standing down there on the sideline than Lowell does. There's a flag. Probably going to be motion on uh, Lowell. Doesn't look like they took enough time for a delay penalty. 
It is against Lowell. Question remains what the call is going to be. And procedure offsides, encroachment, whatever you want to call it, depending on how old you are, you'll have, probably have a different name for it. And they'll bring up first and 15 for the Red Raiders. It's going to be from about their 25-yard line, it looks like. They haven't repainted the lines from last week, so the lines are kind of dull. It's hard to see them. Michaud working over the center, split backs Houston and Rosario. Rosario the back on the right. Houston hands off to... That's Rosario. Rosario running on the left side. Rosario's going to be in, into the end zone. Touchdown, Lowell. Interesting to see there, Rosario First went to the down, left side. Number 20, Ronnie Rosario. Ronnie Rosario running to his unusually opposite side, running up the left, and uh, getting the outside. Chumps are not able to cut the angle, and he's in for six. So not a very good start for the Lions' defenses. Rosario goes around the outside. Doesn't look like they're going to go much inside. It's pretty much a fact around the Lions. You can't get anything up the middle with the Lions' defense. Houston set to try the PAT attempt. There's a snap, the snap's high, it's a fake. And that'll be two. It looks like Michaud was the holder, the quarterback, number seven. And on the high snap and the fake, Chumpster will be down eight nothing with 7.50 left to go in the first period. Dan, I don't understand the Chumpster defense. They really don't look like their own self. Certainly not. And there's Coach Rich. Not very pleased with his offense, with his defensive uh, production, but it's going to happen. Lowell's a good team. Jason Houston with a line drive kick. Chris Morris on the return, number five, picking it up on about his own two-yard line. He's getting a little worried about whether somebody's going to pick the ball up, Dan. Yeah, Morris took it, but he did a good job running it back. And, you know, they're out of trouble now. They're, uh, I believe, they're just, just inside the 30-yard line. Looks like the 28-yard line. Well, and Amolai in on the stop for Lowell. We'll get to see the chunks of offense for the first time this evening. 7.38 left to go in the first period. Here come the Lions. Chris Campbell working over center. He's got one man in the backfield, Morris. Double tight, double wide to the left. There's Morris with the handoff. Looks like maybe a gain of one or two. You know, Chris Campbell, the quarterback, number 10 for Chelmsford, he threw, he threw very well. That's Chris Morris we see on the carry. Head for uh, three yards, it looks like. Good pickup. Looks like the rain slacked off a little bit, Dan. Yeah, you can, if you look against the lights, you can still kind of see it misting a little bit. Again, uh, Campbell working over center. Morris alone back in the backfield. Campbell with the keeper. That almost looked like a broken play, Dan. Yeah, it did a little bit. It's it, kind of weird the way it was, and they, they get, like, two yards on the play, but I don't know. Well, two yards a, two yards a pop is going to be uh, not enough here tonight. Klein Oop. and uh, Fielding split out to the left. Morris alone back in the backfield. Campbell working over center. There's the snap. Campbell dropping back, looking to throw. He's got time. It's tipped and almost intercepted by number 51 for Lowell. I have no, no idea who that is. 51 for Lowell is Matt Dion. Oh. The uh, whole roster is a little shaky to follow. Some of the guys have two numbers. Brings up fourth and long for the Lions. Fourth and six, call it. Mousy back to kick. Not a good start for the Lions is having to punt on their first possession after Lowell scores a touchdown and a two-point conversion. And it's a high kick for the Lions. T takes a little bit of a line. Oh, well, now it takes a low bounce and going to be down just inside the Lowell 40-yard line. Call it the 30. Uh, call it the 30. Down by 38. 53, Jason Alberg. 39 even. Jason Alberg downing the ball for the Lions. 516 left to go in the first period at Alumni Stadium. If you're just tuning in, it's 8-0 Lowell. Chelmsford having to punt on their first offensive series. 
And here comes Misha with the Red Raiders. It might just be a case, I think, of the Lions uh, not being able to Misha pick up on the ball trying to learn the new the uh, offensive. And Misha handing off to Rosario on the counter. Rosario getting up to about the 45, 46 yard line of Lowell. Rosario looks like he's very strong. He's fast, but it looks like he's kind of your power back too because you see how long he stayed up in that pile. He's a strong kid. Uh, over the summer, the uh, Chinese restaurant down at, on Plain Street where Chuck E. Cheese is, uh, the decathlon team was in there. They were re apparently rained out of practice one day and had a chance to meet him. He's a strong little guy. Again, me showed working two backs in the backfield. And I think timeout Lions. That's an interesting call, Dan. Hmm. Certainly is an interesting call. I, I don't know why they would have called the timeout. Lions defense saw something on the low offense they didn't like and call a timeout. Sue Signat and Wachowski talking it over with Jack Fletcher. As uh, Dan Sullivan checks into the game, coming out is Ryan Farley. Wachowski has the word now. See the Lions coming out now, it's uh, second down. But not a very strong possession for the Lions offensively. Now they're coming out defensively for the second time after Lowell has an eight nothing lead. Second and four, Lowell working on about their own 46 yard line. Again, Michel the quarterback, Michel works. There's the handoff to Houston on the inside, inside handoff to Houston. Looks like he'll pick up about two. Brings up third and short. Stop by number 62, Mike Tusignan. Well, I think Lowell, on that case, they tried the experiment of trying to go toward the inside, see what happened, and uh, it didn't work. No, not certainly not the yardage they probably hoped for, but uh, Houston's a big kid, good athlete. Uh, Misha working now in the I formation. Houston, the fullback. Rosario, the tailback. There's the handoff to Rosario. Rosario's off the right tackle. Rosario's going to be stopped just over the line of scrimmage, short of the first down. So it's a good, good follow, good pursuit by the Lowell, uh, not the Lowell, the uh, Chelmsford High School players, the Chelmsford High School defense. They did, they did a pretty good job. That'll bring on Matt Holt to uh, await the Lowell high kick, and I expect that they will punt it. Houston, the seems to be the designated kicker for all occasions here. Usually that's the case though in high school teams. I mean, you have one guy that does all the punting and all the place kicking duties. Holt back on about his own 20 yard line. There's the kick, it's blocked, it's tipped. The block, the, the uh, low punt is tipped. And it's taken by a Chelmsford uh, I don't know if you call him receiver, but taken by a maroon shirt on the Chelmsford 45, and that'll give Chelmsford excellent field position, Dan. Yeah, that, well, that, that will. That uh, gives them about the 45-yard line, 46, it looks like, on their own side, but that's a great, that's a great uh, play, though. So there's an excellent break for the Lions. Instead of taking the ball, perhaps, perhaps on their own 20-yard line or so, they'll have the ball first and 10 on their own 45 and ready to drive deep into the heart of Lowell territory. Hopefully so, coming up on the second Lions possession as you see the score, eight nothing. And we have Campbell over center now. Two guys split to wide right, that's Zeminski you see with the cast on there. Morris has the ball, plowing ahead for about five or six yards. Good little carry by Chris Morris. Saw so, uh, number 92, Carl Metz in the motion. He was a little short motion man, uh, lead blocker. Chunks the ball carrier bouncing around side. Uh, I'm sorry, that was Carl Mas I thought that was Zeminski. I don't even think he's on the football team, but for some reason I had 90, 92 Zeminski in my head. Oh, well. It's okay, Dan. Tell us what's going on. <laughs> okay, well, we got Campbell over center. That's going to be uh, 92 again. I forget his name already. 
And uh, Campbell ahead. Wow, look at that drive by Chris Campbell. He's ahead. He's going to have the first down. Well, I don't think he had much choice. Kyle Metz was running up right behind him, pushing the whole stack. Uh, just That's great. More field position for the Lions. Yeah, it's going to be a first down. I, the referee said something. I didn't hear what he said. I think it was Gugiga uh, Gagagugu. You know what a warm spot I have in my hat for officials. Hey, give me a break. I happened to umpire Little League. And a fine umpire you were. Dan Kachufas, officiator. Yeah, try telling that to half the coaches. Well, youth sports is tough because uh, people take it too seriously. I know, youth... It really causes a problem, I think, like when you have, you know, youth sports and even in high school sports when, you know, the goal obviously is to win, but, you know, in youth sports, I mean... It's tough when you got parents who think that the goal is to win, but it's it's an instructional league, and it's meant for the kids to have fun. Well, that's the important thing. The kids are there to have fun, to learn in a safe environment. It's not a chance for parents to relive their childhood. But enough of our philosophizing. Hey, look at this nice monitor we've got. It's like uh, blue and greenish brown. And oh, boy. All right, well, it's going to be first down for the Lions. Campbell's going to be over center. we got John Kidd in the backfield. That looks like Matt Holt in the backfield. And uh, the deep back is going to be number five, Chris Morris. Mets on the end. Oh, we're going to have a motion call, I think, Dan. Yeah, it looked like we got motion on the Lions. Looks like the uh, left side of the offensive line. So that's going to be a five-yard penalty set him back uh, for five yards. I'm just going to say, look at how far the Lowell coaches are out in the field there. Yeah, that's not cricket. We had the same problem in Methuen. The Methuen coach was about 15 yards out onto the field. There's a certain amount of space you're allowed to have when you coach, but for crying out loud, you can't be in the huddle. Go ahead, I'm done. So we have uh, Campbell now, and oh, dear. It's like we're having a hanky festival. Oh, come on, guys. Mental mistakes. That's two in a row. First down and 20. We went from, from having a short yardage situation. To, oh, brother. First and 20, now look at that. They're back almost where they started on first down the last possession. Campbell brings them out at end. Fielding and Klein split to the top of your screen, wide right, wide left. Campbell takes the snap. He drops back in the passing formation. Guns it across to go to air. He's got a completion for about six, seven yards. Certainly a decent pickup. Well, that'll pick up most of the... Uh, the two procedure calls as Chumpson goes into their hurry up offense looking to catch Lowell off guard Fielding and Klein now split to the opposite side Campbell dropping back to pass good protection across oh it's batted down good play by number eight James Herbor Herbor almost had a gift that'll stop the clock with 252 left to go in the first quarter I think it's the first quarter, yeah. They haven't, they haven't switched sides yet, so yes, it's the I'm first quarter. I'm not even sure what day it is sometimes. It's first quarter. Campbell over center. Dropping back to pass. In a little bit of trouble. He's being chased. Gets off a pass. Oh! oh my goodness. Batted away by Timmy Whalen. Good play by Whalen. Just as it looked like Morris, the intended receiver, was going to come up with a real gem. Whalen jumped in front of him, made a fine play for the low defense. That'll bring up fourth and 14 for the Lions. They're going to have to punt here. If you know, if Morris comes up with that ball, then uh, he's on the uh, to the races to the end zone, which is a good defensive play by the uh, Chelmsford, by not the Chelmsford, the Lowell defense. 
Low Ma with a mid and a deep man back to receive the Chelmsford punt. Monsey to kick. Good protection. Good kick. Taken by Rosario. He's in a little bit of trouble. Oh, come on. He was oh, down. He was down. On. Nice job in the coverage by the Lions. Rosario not going anywhere. It looks like he's going to be down in his own 15 after he looked like he was down about five yards back. But Monsey with a tremendous kick. Nice job on the punt. That's John Kidd we see coming off, number 30. And that 88, you see, belongs to Bill Ryder, a wide receiver. Number 26 for the Lions, Dan Sullivan. Whistle blows, Lowell comes out. <coughs> Rosario and Meat and uh, number five, Houston, out with Michaud over center. Michaud. Hands off to Rosario. Rosario, oh, bounces off a defender. Oh my gosh, look at this kid run, wow. Rosario with a tremendous effort. 95 for Chumsford, Eric Asquith. Almost grabbed him with an ankle pick, but Rosario able to shake it up and pick up another 10 yards. So he advances to about the 35 yard line. Just Rosario weaving in and out of the Lowell uh, offensive line. Low looking very good here early in the whatever we're in here. Low looking very good here Friday night. Yeah, we're still in the first quarter I'm here. Totally lost my mind. But those of you who know me know that's not surprising. It's gonna be first and ten for Lowell from about the 35 yard line. Hopefully this is where Chelmsford can really just put a stop to Lowell's escapades here. Oh, I've got a good official joke for you later on. You can even tell it in mixed company. All right, well, we'll hear it later. <clears throat> there you go. It's about time. The official's just uh, indicating they issued a sideline warning to the Lowell staff for coming out too far onto the field. Good little call. It's going to be Michaud over center. Line defense dancing around a bit. The snap. They give us to Houston, and he's not getting anywhere. He's got a two-yard gain at most. All right, so there's three officials trapped on, a, on an island. And uh, this genie comes by and says, I'll give each of you one wish. So he says to the first official, okay, take your wish. So I wish I could be a soccer coach and instantly he's smart enough to realize he can swim away. The second official says, well, I'll tell you after the next play. Misho now, come back over center. Rosario and Houston in the backfield, and that looks like uh, someone, I can't tell who that is in the sideline. Misho driving back to pass, complete and just upended by Dom Lacapo. good tackle. Lacapo with a nice tackle that'll bring up well, third and third and three, third and four for Lowell. So the the genie gives the second official his wish. He says, "Well, I want to be smarter than the first official." So he's instantly turned into a field hockey coach, builds a boat, and sails off. The third official says, "Wow, okay, I want to take my wish." And uh, Michaud coming back over center. In the shotgun, excuse me. Dropping back to pass, quick out. Uh-oh. Look at this, number 87 on his way down the sideline, cutting in and out. Coderre in pursuit, and he finally stops him about the five yard line. Sing Fetvixe. It's another guy you have to look for. We have 48 seconds Second left. Number 15, Phil Coderre. Another guy you have to look out for. I mean, that pass was completed, and it was barely over the line of scrimmage, and then he makes that happen, just weaving in and out. Lowell has a team. Lowell, Lowell has some very fast people. They certainly do. Michaud coming back out over center. Got that power eye backfield. From about the five yard line, Michaud is going to hand off to Rosario. 
into the end zone for a touchdown. Touchdown number 20, Ronnie Rosario. 14. To nothing. Rosario, unbelievably, he was just untouched. I'll see if Lowell actually kicks it this time, and I expect that they will. Houston set for the PAT. Pick is up. It is good. Oh, looks like it just got in through that crossbar. 21 seconds to go in this first quarter. So the score, 15 to nothing in Lowell's favor with 21 seconds left to go in the first quarter. The genie says to the third official, what's your wish? I'd like to be smarter than both of those other two. So the genie turns him into a football coach and he takes the bridge home across the water. Oh. It's wet and it's cold. It's the best I could come up with. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like Al on Happy Days. I could have been a contender. Back to receive for Chelmsford. Number five, Chris Morris. Number 20. Look at those Lowell uh, uniforms, and they're already quite dirty. Ah, it's that Madden factor. Holt and Morris. Back for Chelmsford deep. Houston pacing off his steps here, getting ready to kick. There's the kick. It's a short high kick taken by the second up back. And he's going to be brought down immediately at about the Chelmsford 41-yard line. That'll give the Lions first and 10 from about their own 41. 14 seconds left to go in the first quarter here at Alumni Stadium. That was, and, I'm sorry, Dan, go ahead. That was a Ron Rich on the carry. Uh, he's, a defense, he's an offensive guard by nature <coughs> or and on this year's roster. Who said linemen don't have great hands? But he played tight end last year, so. That's true. So you know he's got to have hands for something if he played tight end. Here come the Lions. Campbell over center. Morris alone back in the backfield. Campbell looking to throw. Campbell throws. It's complete to Morris. He's over midfield. He's still on his feet. Bowls his way to the 46-yard line of Lowell. Nice job. Certainly was a great job. Just came bolting out of the backfield, and the pass was completed to him, and he got five yards. And I don't know that we'll get another playoff here in the first quarter. And we won't. That'll be the end of the first quarter of play here at George Simonian Alumni Stadium. Lowell ahead 15 to nothing. The Chelsea Lions showing spirit. As you see in the, oh, nice graphics. Look at those letters, and that's spiffy. Wow. Yeah, thanks to our uh, studio uh, control room person. Who's in the control room tonight, Dan? Kurt Heinrich. Hi, Kurt. All right, while well, Kurt changes those graphics, we're going to go to break is brought to you in part by Evzon, the Greek-American family restaurant located at 83 Parkhurst Road, Drum Hill, where you get the taste of Greece without leaving the country. Evzon, offering a wide variety of authentic Greek cuisine, where John and Kiki are waiting to serve you eat-in, take-out, and party platters. This production is also brought to you by Brickhouse Pizza. For fast free delivery anywhere in Chelmsford for the best takeout around, call Brickhouse Pizza. We use only the best sauces and cheese available, and all our delicious Italian cuisine is homemade. So give us a call at 251-0480 and enjoy something from Brickhouse tonight. Hey, we're back. And uh, the last commercial, the voiceover actually was done by Chew Enterprises. Choo Choo for you. All right, here come the Lions, first and 10. Ball on the 46-yard line of Lowell. Mets in motion. There's the handoff. Morris inside the low 45, call it the 44. Carried by number five, Chris Morris. I gotta tell you, Carl Metz, uh, the, the motion back, 
He's got an old pickup truck, and it's purple. It's just the coolest color. Number eight. I'm sorry, go ahead. Carl Metz's father, Ed Metz, is an umpire, works for the MBUA, and does a lot of high school games and stuff, and does a good job. Uh, Carl's mother, Judy, a former all-star Chelmsford high school athlete, a few years ago, as the Lions come out, second and eight. Mets in motion, quarterback keeper. Not a lot there. Quite a poor decision, I think. Chunks are trying to spread the uh, uh, low defense out for the quarterback keeper. Now, we know that sideline warning was issued to the Lowell High School Red Raiders. Uh, what happens if they get another sideline warning? Uh, it's a flag. I forget how many yards. After, I think after one warning, they throw a flag. I'm not sure if you get two, one warning each half. Campbell working over center. One back in the backfield. Twin split left. Campbell, look, keep it. Campbell, where is Campbell? Under that pile there, it looks like. I don't know what that was all about, Dan. It certainly wasn't a broken play because right away, uh, Campbell tried to go up through the middle. Still trying to spread the Lowell defense out, and Chelmsford's going to go for it. Fourth, fourth down. And fourth and six. They really don't have any choice. Campbell looking to throw. He's under pressure. He gets it off. That'll be the first down right there. What an effort. Wow. 87. Mark Coderre with a tremendous effort to get the first down. That's actually Matt Coderre. The, uh, for some reason, it was printed wrong in the roster as Mark Coderre, but it is Matt Coderre for you people watching at home. Number 87, Matt Coderre. We apologize to Matt's mother and father. Chounce at first and 10. Nine minutes left to go in the half. Campbell again with the pop pass. And it's blocked. Threw it right into Jason Houston. He's lucky he didn't intercept that ball. And Jason Houston is an awful tall obstruction. He is. He's uh, 6'3", 215. He's a senior. Lions going with the hurry up offense. Campbell again with the keeper. Campbell's got some room. He's kind of squiggling through. He'll be down to about the 30 yard line. That was an interesting run. It'll bring up third down and about four, uh, six yards, excuse me. It's kind of like a dance. Pirouette, sidestep, sidestep. Pirouette, sidestep, sidestep. Interesting stat. Uh, last week, Chris Campbell was 11 for 13 passing, but only had 74 total yards passing. Wow. Had 107 rushing, though. Wow. Okay, Campbell again working over the center. Morris alone back in the backfield. There's the handoff to Morris. Morris has got room. Morris is up the middle. Morris looks like he's going to have the first down. Uh, it'll be close anyhow. Yes. And that will be a first down for the Lions. It's good to see now the Lions finally moving the ball along. It's almost like somebody's thrown a switch and they've realized that, hey, uh, we're here playing football. It's just the first couple, the first series and the first defensive series, they just looked like they were just kind of still getting their feet wet, so to speak. Worcester and Bertolami checking in for the Lions, uh, number eight and number four, respectively, split to the bottom of the screen. Campbell hands off to Morris from deep in the backfield. Morris is chugging, and he's going to pick up maybe about three. Decent second effort as, after he was wrapped up at about the original line of scrimmage. And then ahead for, you know, however many yards he did get. It looks like a uh, uh, four-yard pickup. Clock ticking down to five and a half left to go in the half. With the ball on the, uh, looks like the low 20-yard line. Yeah, that sounds about right. Morris alone back in the backfield. Morris looking to throw. Morris throws it. Oh! We're going to have, uh, looks. I would guess it's going to be an interference call. That looks like from where the flag was thrown immediately, probably a pass We've interference We've got a Chelmsford call. man down on the field. That's never a good thing. That's Coderre that down on the field, and the trainer's rushing over immediately. Coderre was the intended receiver, and as the ball went through his hand, or it didn't really go through his hand, it went by his hand, he took a vicious whack.
Holding call on Lowell. The initial or legal use of hands or something like that. Probably Face a mask. holding call, not letting the receiver go downfield. Well, I'd rather uh, a little concerned about Kader, the uh, nobody uh, likes to see that type of thing happen, regardless of which team it is. And certainly, we hope that he's okay. Charlie Zocotier still down in the field. And while we're waiting to see what's happening down in the field, we're going to go to this important break. Pay attention. Here at Catalog U, consumer information catalogs train hard to list the best free and low-cost federal booklets. So call toll-free 1-888-8-Pueblo for the latest free catalog. It'll win you over. Hey, we're back. Don't forget to write to Pueblo, Colorado for your free wetchum, I call it. My goodness. Hey, all right, he's up. Let's give him a hand, folks. Up and running off under his own power. That's a good sign. There we got happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Nate McKinnon's birthday. He's 14 today. We're going to come up with some new people to have birthdays for. So as we're waiting to get back underway, 5.05 left to go in the first half here at Alumni Stadium. If you're just tuning in, Lowell leading 15 to nothing, driving right down the field on their first possession, going for the fake PAT. And uh, Chelmsford driving. We've just been taking an injury timeout. And uh, we, we see you know, Lowell coming back out onto the field. It's going to be first down and goal for the Lions. This is a tough situation to be in for the Lions. They have a first down, but it's right on the 10-yard line, so first down and goal. All right, here come our Lions. First and goal. Campbell with the triple-I backfield. There's a handoff to Morris. Morris is around one end. He's around the other. He's still going. Morris is going to be down to about the four-yard line. Great run by Morris. He was try. He's almost wrapped up at one instance and then ahead and still you know, going around the end. Got it. I want to apologize a little, ladies and gentlemen, for the picture. The uh, cameras are uh, having a little problem with the weather, and they're not always quite as sharp as you're used to, but uh, we're working on it. We actually we have new cameras that will be in use next week, I believe. Hoorah, here come the Lions. Morris the deep back in the backfield. Here's the handoff to Morris. Morris is going to be stuffed up. Third and goal now from about the five. Now five they, minutes left to go in the half. In the goal line situation, do they keep going with it? Uh, even on fourth down, or do they try for the field goal? I think we're going to have to go for it. We need, a, uh, we need a touchdown. I think a field goal is not good enough. Campbell on the keeper. Campbell pokes it up like he's going to throw. Now he tucks it down, and he's heading in. And Campbell's going to be in for the touchdown. Wow, what a great run by Campbell. Deciding to keep it himself. And around the end, that was a great decision by Campbell. And into the end zone, six points. Now the question is, Chelsea going to go for one or two here? Doesn't look like there's going to be much of a fake there. They're going to go for, oh, no, Mounsey is out there. Looks like Chelsea is going to take the secure point and go into the, uh, oh, it's not really quite ready to go in the half. 439 left to go in the half. Be great if Chumster Be great if uh Chumster can get the ball back and possibly put it into the end zone again. There's the kick, it's up, and it's good. So with 439 left to go in the first half, Chumster brings uh the score to 15 to 7 in front of Lowell. And you know, Miles he has all he, you know he's been almost automatic this year with his PAT attempts. He's just done a great job. That's what they're calling him, Automatic Bouncy, the PA team man. I think uh, he hasn't missed one all year. 
Not so far, no. Is it one, two, three, four, five? That's a six, six out of six so far this year. Excellent job by Mouncy the kicker. Boy, the wind's starting to pick up a little. The rain's gone, and it's starting to, well, it's still a little drizzly, I guess, but it's starting to cool off appreciably now. I'm going to have to oh. go and find that winter coat. I don't know what I did with it last spring. Same thing everything everybody else did with it. Packed it away in mothballs or something. I've really been impressed so far with the job that Jeff Smart has done kicking. Number 85 for the Lions. That's smart. Jeff Smart. And it's a bouncing squibber. Taken on the f uh, 35. That's uh, 41, it looks like. Bobby Hooker for the Raiders. I'm noticing now a strategy developing for the Lions. It seems that all their kicks have been short kicks. It tells me that, you know, they want to keep the ball out of Rosario's hand, who is back deep. I certainly concur with that idea. So, because you're going to be getting the same kind of yardage anyway from a guy like Rosario. He's going to be getting up to about the 40-yard line every time anyway. Michaud over center. Two guys in the backfield, same as we've had. The handoff. Wow, what a run out there by uh, number 20, Rosario. Moves out, KP Walsh coming off for the Lions. With Misho over center. And he's over center this time. First down from about the line 45. 401 remains. The give is to Rosario. He's got room. He jumps in and out. Oh my, he's still on his feet. Oh my gosh, look at this. Rosario into the end zone. Touchdown. Hey, it's Jeff Stahel and Dan Kachoufis. We're back here live at George Simone and Alumni Stadium, getting ready to start the second half here. Chelmsford not doing so well this evening, Dan. Well, unfortunately not, but you know, they got 20 minutes left to do something, and scoring three touchdowns and more points in 20, in, uh, 20 minutes isn't a... Uh, how what what word am I looking for? I forget what I'm just gonna say. It, it's not it's not an impossible task. Certainly, the Lions are capable of scoring more than three touchdowns in a half. What concerns me is while well, they're scoring the touchdowns, uh, uh, will the defense be able to stop Ronnie Rosario and company? Well, that that's a valid concern. I, I really. Seven I, on the season. I don't know. I, I really it's. He's, he's, he's just a great, great running back. You know, while we're on this, while I just saw them, I, we'd like to welcome, uh, we have a number of Italian exchange students from Sardinia, Italy, with us. Sardinia, Italy? For Sar Sardinia. Is that more than one Sardine? I think so, something like that. I don't oh. know. Abundanza. Uh, no, no hablo italiano. Let's see, can we come up with some Italian? Um, Lasagna, manicotti, chicken cacciatore. Cacciatore. The Italian food names, that, that, that's, that's about all I know. Well, welcome anyway. I hope you're enjoying American football. Brought to you by... Chelmsford Cable TV, the Chelmsford High School Television Club. It's Jeff Stout and Nick Kachoufis. We're waiting to start the second half of live action here at George Simonian Alumni Stadium. The Lions not doing well this evening. The Little Red Raiders with a 28-7 lead. We're waiting. The officials are waiting. Everybody's waiting. What are we waiting for, Dan? Uh, Chelmsford, actually. I thought somebody was missing. You know, Lowell's out there warming up on the sideline. The referees are at midfield. 
you know, just waiting there. Call 911. Somebody stolen our Lions. We'd like to remind hey, the Lions are back. The Lions are coming out on the field. Yeah, the Lions back out onto the field. Lowell's going to be kicking with the wind, so that's why they're back so deep. Jason Houston, the Lowell kicker. Yeah, this, the sound system it sounds great. It's loud, but it sounds good. Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. I've just developed a case of the hiccups. <laughs> it's a short high kick. It's going to be taken on the fly by 65. Rich. That's Ron Rich. Plows ahead to about the 35-yard line. That's the we second kick the Ron Rich has taken already today. That's the second one he scoped out. Wow, he's he's a... He's a, he's, he's a small lineman. He's not a small kid, but he's a small... 6'2", 225 listed. He told me today he weighs about 215, so... It seems like these uh, weights in the roster are 10, 15 pounds over. It's a television camera. It puts weight on everybody. All right, Campbell working over the center. I formation. Mets in motion. It's a handoff to Morris. Morris will be... Morris will be bulldogged after a gain of about one. I just so far this year I haven't I haven't really been as impressed with Morris as I was even with uh, Heslin in his junior year. Well, then again, not everybody is Ned Heslin. Certainly, he is doing a great job. Don't get me wrong, but. Here comes Campbell, double tight, wide left, wing right, eye formation. The wing Mets in motion. He's going to be the lead blocker. Flag in the play. Morris has got the ball. Flags from both sides of the ball, so the official, both sides, both linesmen must have seen something. Probably an offsides on. Procedure against Chumsford. Lowell discussing it with the Lions, uh, the officials rather, penalty against the Lions. And that'll mark Chumsford back five, where it'll be second and about 13. So a legal formation called on the Lions. Chumsford comes back out over the ball. 84 Lions split out to the bottom of your screen. Second and about 13. I formation. Campbell looking to throw. Campbell rolls left. He's looking, he's looking. And he gets it, barely gets it off. The uh, quote unquote intended receiver, number 84, Tim Lyons. Campbell wisely uh, making sure that it was not intercepted. That'll bring up third and 14. So go to third down, and you know this is. I think this is a big situation for the Lions here. They got to convert on this, and you know get the first down, get a big gain, and head for the first down. They really have to do that in this situation. Up come the Lions, third down. Campbell works. Morris alone back in the backfield. Campbell looking to throw. Campbell sets up. Campbell. Oh, he's under trouble. He's in. Oh, brother. Campbell under pressure, finally lets go, and it's blocked. That'll be ruled incomplete. That'll that bring up fourth down and long. Is that about, the, I think that's about the third or the fourth uh, blocked pass Lowell's had all day. Well, Lowell's got a pretty tall defensive line, and uh, Campbell lets it go. It's it's a uh, almost like a pop pass, where it's a short yardage pass on a on line drive at a down angle, and those are very easily blocked if you've got the height. Chelsea back kick. Rosario deep on about the th low 35 yard line. There's the kick. It's uh, going to be taken by the short man. Fair catch called on the low 45. Michaud, the quarterback, works with the I formation. 
Double tight, split left. Chumps it on the defense. 9.26 left to go in the third quarter. There's the pitch to Rosario. Rosario looking to roll up the left side. He's under pressure. He breaks one tackle. He hits for the sideline. And finally driven out of bounds at about midfield. What a five-yard pickup for Rosario on that drive. He, he did a good job staying up and powered his way out of bounds. So the clock stops at 8.19. Looks like they're spotted just inside the 50-yard line. Uh, that'll give Lowell about a second and five situation. And you are correct, Dan. The nose of the ball just thrusting on the stripe. V Show again will work with the I formation. We've got a new fullback in there. There's the handoff to Rosario. Rosario through the middle, not even touched, not even a glove laid on him. He's going to have the first down and more. He's breaking up the sideline. He's almost gone. Finally knocked what looks like out of bounds down near the 20 yard line of the Lions. That wasn't Rosario, I don't think. That was Jason Houston on the carry. It's hard to tell with all the mud they have in their uniforms. Big but boy, 6'3", 215, he's a senior. But there is a flag in the play. It looks like it's going to come back. It's going to be a legal block in the back. That's a tough call. Did you hear the lone chunks with fan applauding? Do you think with that many people out there we could generate some more noise? So that'll bring it back again, the ball resting at just about midfield. It'll be second and five again for the Red Raiders. We'll basically do it all over. So it'll be second down at about five yards. So Houston the tailback. Can't quite make out the fullback. showed again working over the center. There's the handoff. Wow, Houston powers ahead. He'll have the first down. About six, seven yards. Looks about six yards. That's just that's just a typical Jerome Bettis power run. Trying to pick up who the fullback is here. I can't quite make out that number. It looks like an eight, maybe. I think the fullback actually is Kenny Silva, number 52. 52, okay. And we'll try and pick the number on. Brian Farley on the carry, okay. So Brian Farley Rose on the tackle. Farley is a chumper player, Jeff. I'm all confused. I'm trying to read the numbers off these doggone white shirts. And the Madden factor is keeping me from doing it. <laughs> Doesn't look like Michaud's the quarterback anymore either. Oh, yeah. Okay. Michaud is Michaud's the quarterback. Michaud's still the quarterback. Silva's the fullback. First and ten. Oh, fumble, oh, fumble, fumble, fumble! Picked up by Matt Coderre. Chomster takes possession. Inside about the 46 yard line. A tremendous defensive effort by the Lions. The uh, low quarterback driven into the ground. The ball goes squirting loose, and the Lions will have it first and 10 from their own 45 yard line. And I think that was just a case of, uh, of um, squirty ball. Or <laughs> for me, how, how do I say it? Um, you know, just, just a case of. Grip us, interrupt us? Yeah. Campbell takes him out over center. Lone man is Morris in the backfield. Fielding and uh, that's uh, Eric Klein. Oh, Lowell defender misses uh, Chris Morris. He's around the outside. He's got room, and he's out of bounds about the 40-yard line. Tremendous run by Chris Morris, and he gets out of bounds to stop the clock. It's a good play by Chris Morris. And, you know, they they – they came out, they didn't look very focused coming out of the locker room, but they look pretty good so far in the second half. Yeah, it looks like they uh, have made a uh, quite the turnaround during halftime. 
Campbell bringing him back out, fielding, and uh, that looks like. Well, I don't know who that is, but the handoff is to Morris. There's a flag on the play. Three flags. I think it's going to be against Chelmsford. Illegal formation or procedure. And there's a fourth flag goes down. Well, you know. It <laughs> that might be a lay hit on Lowell because the referee said something to the Lowell. To the I Lowell don't know. Place. One official throws a flag. They all have to throw a flag. Holding Chelmsford. That's a 10-yard penalty. Personal foul. Personal foul on Lowell. That's probably Lowell. a late hit from when the flag was thrown. So that should be offsetting. We'll do the down over again. So certainly a break for the Lions as there's a personal foul, which normally be a 15-yard penalty, but since it offsets. A 15-yard penalty. <laughs> since, well, the holding call is a 10-yard penalty, but it offsets when you get penalties like that. It's not like Chumster gets the advantage. Unfortunately, but more mental mistakes here on the Lions part. They've got to avoid those flags. Yeah, the on the offense. They had a dead ball, personal foul against the defense. So the first down red. So it appears that that's what it'll be. The ball. So we pick up. So they will, they'll give him five yards in the play. Pick up five, okay. Okay, so it offsets five yards. Not a bad net gain, so it's gonna be first down and uh, about three. The way they're moving the ball around, it's like the Clinton shuffle. Now we're gonna have an official delay. The Lowell coach is out in the field. Oh, throw the flag, ref, come on. They've been warned about coaching from too far out onto the field, and I'm sure that's what this is all about. The officials are gesturing, and... I think Lowell, the, what the Lowell coaches are not happy about is that they're not happy about the spot of the ball. Well, apparently they lost the argument. So it'll be first down and 10 instead of the chains at first down and three. But it will be first down and 10 from the from the uh, low, looks like the 30, low 33-yard line, 34-33. Campbell over center. He drops back to pass. He fires. The pass is picked off. Tackle is going to be made by Fielding on the interception, number 41, Bobby Hooker. Campbell pass intercepted by number 41, Bobby Hooker. There's another flag on on the ground, I'm not sure what happened, but it's gonna be against Lowell. Be a, probably be a false start, I think. Let's see what the indication yeah. is by our official. Lowell seems to be having hey, a- Check his ticket real quick. Yeah, Lowell, see, Lowell seems to be having a problem with the, uh, being in the neutral zone and offsides with their linemen. The handoff is going to be to Rosario. Oh, come on. oh boy. Warshawski finally makes the tackle, but not after about a 17 yard pickup. Can you believe the acceleration? Rosario is just so quick and so hard to tackle. He's, oh, he's good. He looks like he's limping now, though. Man, Keep in mind, he, he, did, he did spend the last series on the sideline. It was uh, actually with uh, Houston. As the full back, as the halfback, I mean. I was so confused without Rosario in the game. But now he's in there with Houston back at his normal fullback position. Misho still over center. Drops back to pass, gets hit, and the pass is going to be complete. No. Going down the sideline, Farley makes the tackle. The receiver, number eight, James Herbor, goes down to about the seven yard line. Well, I'll tell you, Dan, it's not. Uh, it's not a good thing, but I'll tell you, Lowell's offense is really clicking tonight. They look very good. They certainly are. What I think we had happen there is that they had everybody drawn up, expecting the handoff to Rosario, and then they just pass right over everybody to Herbor, and he just goes ahead, and you had uh, Ryan Farley making the tackle from behind him. Michaud now over center. Handoff is to Rosario, and he's covered by Tuzignant.
Coder and uh, that's that's Phil Coder at. And I didn't see who the third defender was, but. Zario's fast, but he can play the power game too as well, it looks like. Michaud now over center. Up back is Houston. Far back is Rosario. The give is to Houston. He's ahead. It's going to be stopped on about the two-inch line. Wow. It's going to be third and very, very short for the touchdown. Third and, third and very short for the goal. Third and looks like about a foot. Barry McDonald checking out for the Lions. 424 left to go in the third period hit at George Simone Alumni Stadium. This would be a big boost for the Lions if they can stop the Red Raiders. Fedvixe out split to the bottom of the screen. Remember they threw to him earlier. Me showed on the keeper. And Didn't look like they got it. It does look like they ruled him down. Now we're waiting. Low player is a signaling touchdown. And the referee signals touchdown. Lowell touchdown, number seven, Adam Michaud. Quarterback keeper. Oh. Thirty-four to seven. Houston to kick, Michaud to hold. The kick, oh, almost blocked, but it looks like it's good. And unfortunately, Dan, it is good. That makes the score 35 to seven, 354 left to go in the third period here in Chumsford. Houston ready to kick, there's the kick, it's a deep kick. Taken deep in the Chumsford territory by Holt. Holt still on his feet, finally brought down. Brought down about the 30-yard line. If you could see it, uh, Chelmsford had a wedge going up to the near sideline, but he elected to go around the wedge to the other side, and I think that might have cost him a little extra yardage. Well, the ball will be first and 10 at about the Chelmsford 30. 3.44 left to go in the third period, 35-7. to Chelmsford not leading. I'd like to congratulate all the folks down in the control van who've learned to count to five. That was a big accomplishment for the week. That and the letter H. Campbell working over the center. We only have, tw we only have 25 more letters to go here. Campbell. Campbell looking to throw. He's under pressure. And it looks complete. If the officials rule it complete, that'll be a first down. Campbell pass complete to number eight. Chris I think that was a gift call. I think it bounced personally. Uh, hard to tell from the reverse angle here. Remember, we're the faithful. It's always a completion. Chelmsford getting Chelmsford offensive line giving Campbell time to throw that time. Again, Morris alone back in the backfield. Campbell showing pass all the way. Campbell looking deep. He's looking for a receiver. And oh my goodness. Rejected. It's like number eight, James Herbauer for the Campbell Red Raiders. He's another tall guy on the team. 6'1, 205. 81, Ken Fielding checking into the game. Fielding and Klein split to the left or the bottom of your screen. Morris Stallone back in the backfield, double tight. Campbell working over the center. Campbell calls the signals. Campbell drops back, looking, showing pass, showing pass in the flat to Morris. Morris ditches one. He's going to get to midfield. He breaks the tackle. He's down to the 45 to 44. He's ahead for the first down. Oh, come on now. Come on. None of that. Tempers are flaring in the pile, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Chris Morris did a great job, broke one tackle, and then ahead, moved it ahead for a first down. Lions Good love the ball. Play. You are correct, sir. Lions love the ball on about the low 44-yard line. Morris again, the lone back in the backfield. Twins split to the top of your screen, double tight. Morris, excuse me, Campbell looking to throw. Campbell airs it out deep. Campbell's got a, oh, broken up at the last minute. Good play by the Lowell secondary. You know, at this point, Lowell has, is forcing Chelmsford to throw the ball, and they're doing a good job of 
uh, doing what they have to do. Klein, the intended receiver. That brings us down to 2.57 left to go in the third period. No change in the score. Second and 10. Still in the third quarter, ladies and gentlemen. Mets steps back. Mets in motion. Campbell working. Campbell pitches to Morris. Morris heads up field. He's got some room. He's got some blocks. He's still on his feet. Second effort down to the low 35-yard line. So it's a good second effort by Chris Morris, and that's what I like to see him do more. We haven't seen that, really a lot of that from him, and you know he really needs to start doing that. It's a good job by Chris Morris. Split twins to your right. Campbell working with the lone back, Morris. Campbell looking to throw. Campbell sets up, he's under pressure. Morris blocks, and it's jammed again. That'd be 75 for Lowell. Dan Malovich. 6'5", 250 pounds, senior. Now the Campbell man's bringing the Lions up to the line of scrimmage. I Morris see. alone back in the backfield, split twins to the left. Campbell keeps it, Campbell's on his feet. Campbell's gonna have five or six, maybe seven. And he'll have the first down. Good run by Campbell, he moved the pile ahead himself. The Lions will come back to the line of scrimmage. Well. Well, you repeated it twice. Here we go. Campbell looking to throw. Campbell under pressure. Campbell gets it off. Oh, incomplete. Campbell under pressure by number 70 for Lowell. Tom Thornton. 6'3", 270 pounds senior, and he's a big boy. John Madden to call him a wide body, Dan. 6'3", 270. That's a whole lot of linemen coming at you. About as big as one of those trucks going by on Route 3 in the background. This is not LNG. Second and 10, 2.08 to go. The ball about the 30 yard line of Lowell. Fielding and Klein split out to the bottom of your screen. Murphy the lone, uh, Morris alone back in the backfield. Mets in motion. Mets the lead blocker. Morris has got the ball. Morris is still driving. Morris is doing a great job this second half with the second effort. Better than I've seen him run all year. He's certainly running with a lot of heart tonight, Dan, and uh, setting an example for the Lion offense. The Lions were uh, playing in their hurry-up offense. And you need to score a lot of points in a short amount of time. And there's Campbell with the keeper. Campbell heading around the end. He's got some space. He's got some room. Put the ball down. He's still on his feet. He's ahead. He uh, ooh, just looks like he got over the line of scrimmage, but there's going to be a flag on the play. It might be a block in the back by Chelmsford. A holding on Chelmsford. No, I didn't see where the hold was. So. It is going to be against the Lions. Oh, dear. Just when you think you're building up some momentum, unfortunately, we get a flag in the play. And here's the call. Offense, for a That'll bring us back to third and 15, 137. Excuse me, third and third and 16, 137 left to go in the third period. Chumsford still trying to drive. That's more than third and 13. That's more like third and 20. Campbell works. Mer uh, Looks like that's going to be a false start on the Lions. You know, as much as Ronnie Rosario has done to turn things in Lowell's favor, we're just not seeing the mental sharpness tonight. Back to back, this is the third time tonight I think we've had back to back penalties. Certainly have. Cold night, maybe the cold is numbing their brains or something, but. Uh, it's just not mentally sharp football, and unfortunately, 35 to 7 with one quarter basically left to go. It's a tough thing to keep conceding all that yardage when you're uh, losing your momentum. So it, it certainly is. It's costing them dearly. It's third down at about 21. All right, we're going to have uh, timeout by the Lions is what we're going to have. We've got a little confusion. I think I'm suffering from a panic attack right now. Phew, brother. I'm telling you, my friend. Hey, if you're just tuning in, it's Jeff Stallard and Dean Kachoufis. We're live at Alumni Stadium, Chelmsford Community Television, the Chelmsford Television, 
Charles High School Television Club bringing you this live action. We're just getting ready to come back after a timeout. It's 50 seconds left to go in the third period here at Alumni Stadium. Lions are third and 21, and they're trying to drive. Unfortunately, the score is 35 to 7 in favor of the Little Red Raiders. They spelled our names right. Look. Hey, what do you know? Must have gone to Chelmsford High School. Campbell working. Campbell with the pitch to Morris. Morris on the reverse. It's a reverse pass to Campbell. Campbell's got it. It's complete. Campbell's got some room. He's still on his feet. He's running downfield. He's still on his feet. Spin, spin, and okay. Had to about the 17-yard line. Good confusion play. Chelsea with the flea flicker, and they'll pick up almost all of the lost penalty territory. And they'll bring up about fourth and about... Oh, they get the first down. How do you know? Nice job by Campbell. Wow, just weaving in and out. Campbell, Campbell's a great player. Campbell's just a good all-around quarterback. Chelsea comes out in the eye. Morris the tailback. Mets steps off. Mets the motion man. He'll be the lead blocker. Campbell with the handoff to Morris. Morris is through. Morris has got some room. Morris is driving and he's pushing and he's driving. He's going to be down close to the five yard line. Again, we see that great second effort by Chris Morris. And he did a great job pushing Lowell defenders forward. You know, a lot of credit goes to their lead blockers which was Carl Metz, number 92. And while we have this break in the action, I want to wish a happy birthday to school committee woman Evelyn Thorne, who's 39 today. Just kidding, Yev. We're going to have a timeout on the field as the quarter ends, and we're going to go into the fourth quarter. Looks like we have a guest drum major here. Wearing a UMass Lowell band jacket. Oh, a ringer. I don't know, Dan. I can't even see what you're looking at. Oh, I see now. And we're just informed that's a former drum major for Chelmsford High School. Hey, once a lion, always a lion. Speaking of lions, Campbell brings the lions out. He's got the ball. He's rolling to his left. He's looking to throw. And it's going to be touchdown Chelmsford. Coder on the reception. It's good play, good time given by the Chelmsford offensive line. You've got to give them credit today because they've done a lot of things for Chris Campbell. You know, after all this, five minutes into the fourth quarter, it just looks so easy. Actually, we're only five seconds into the fourth quarter. Whatever. Whatever. This is a, this is a very slow-moving game. My nephew's two and a half. He's, he's learned to say that. My sister will go, hey, knock it off. He'll go, whatever. And we're getting ready for the PAT attempt. There's a snap, the kick is up, and the kick is good. So that's seven of seven for Eric Monzi. Unfortunately, the Lions are still on the short end of a score, and they are by still a long time, a long way. It's kind of a foggy kind of pea soupy looking shot. Pretty much uh, describes our night here. Yeah. It's a cold one. It's rainy and drizzly. Jeff Smart to kick for Chumsford. Too early to try the onside kick. Smart puts the ball up. Taken by Fitvixe. Oh, he's got a seam up the middle, but he's going to be taken down by Coderre, who just scored the touchdown. A little bit of pushing there. That got a little scary looking there, Dan. Almost looked like he was going to break the seam. It certainly did. Fitvixe is a guy that, you know, he can, he can make things happen. And so he can do that. He's done it all season.
35 to 14 your score. It's going to be Michaud coming out. New fullback, 23, Sean Sweeney in. Oh, tripped up. That looks like that was uh, Jason Houston on the carry, and in fact, it was Jason Houston. This is a case where they're getting some of their second stringers sometime. That would be the time to do it. 95 on the trip up, Eric Asquith for the Lions. Yeah, you're, bas you're basically into... Uh, sub time now a lot of some of the second stringers especially some of the seniors get a chance to get in Misho over center he gives to Houston and he's immediately taken down got a gain of about one or two and it's third down and uh, about six or seven well, Chumsford needs to really try and force a turnover, but at the very least, not let uh, Lowell get another first down. They've got to force Lowell to give the ball over one way or the other. Okay, and we've got a timeout on the field. Timeout Lowell. Dan, you're speechless. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, you know, this this is this is the time. To Wendy Russo and Erica Milardo. Announcing the Chelmsford High School cheerleaders. Our cheerleaders, Meredith Mingalelli, Ali Fair, Julie Lindquist, Crystal Marcligiano. Misho in the shotgun. Why is he in the shotgun? Oh, the, uh, that's third down and long. That's right. In trouble. Asquith giving chase. Oh. oh, no. The pass is completed to Bobby Thank Hooker, so. dancing in and out. Finally down, though, there's a flag down on the play. You know, the only thing Chelsea could do right now is hope that flag is against Lowell, because I'm telling you right now, that first down could be the end of the game. Kimmy Long. Ineligible down, looks like it might be ineligible downfield. See, that's good to see um, number 51, Evan Let's Dunn, coming off. Day. That's Evan Dunn. He, remember, he went down. Hand. Let me correct hand. myself and say that and the penalty is against Chumsfit, and that'll bring Lowell just ever so closer to the goal line. I didn't get the call on that, Dan. Did you see what the infraction was? Uh, no, I didn't. The referee had his hand, had the hand on the back of his head. My guess, it might have been a personal foul because it was a 15-yard penalty. On the play, uh, Lowell head for about three yards. Second about seven. They give to Matt Zusimus. And now it looks like they're going to have their, all their players in. Zusimus is a sophomore. Hey, Dan, that must be the Italian exchange students down there doing the tourist thing here, down here in our bleachers. Yep, that is them. No, I don't know what happened either. We still have the cheerleaders. Megan. Uh, looks like uh, third and three. Looks more like four. Mm -hmm. 
Michaud takes the snap, the handoff, it was to the up back that looked like Zuzumas or Hooker or someone, a 40 number. Carry by number 40, Matt Zuzumas. Hey, I got it right there, Danny boy. Clock heading down to five and a half minutes left to go in the ball game. With a Greek name like that, he's gotta be talented. Don't argue with you, Brandon, I won't argue with you. Looks like Lowell's got quite a bunch of talented players. Yep. 35 to seven is the score, 6.15 remains. Now Kachufas, that's Irish, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah, something like that. Uh, Zuzumas again on the carry. Takes it ahead, looks like he'll have the first down. Zuzumas, he's, he's a decent sized kid, it looks like. 5'10, 175. Looks like he's still in, and the up back is going to be, looks like 23, Sean Sweeney, another sophomore. Pitches to Zuzumas, he's around the end. Fleming trips him up. Now, what's the flag for this time? 55, It's going to be against Lowell. Illegal block in the back, it looks like. So they're going to pace off a few yards. Oh, boy. So it'll be second, first down and 20. I always thought that penalties should be, you know, a loss of down also. Your yardage back in the loss of down, but it's not the way it works, unfortunately. And sometimes fortunately. With Michaud over center, the handoff to Zuzumas. Not going to get much. Oh, oh, calm down out there. Well. Late hits all over the place. This is turning to a very physical game. Well, it Lowell and Chelsea have been an intense rivalry over the years. And uh, certainly uh, Tempest flaring a little on the Chelmsford sideline. Guys frustrated at things not going well tonight. It was just, I mean, tonight it's just a case of Ronnie Rosario. Ronnie Rosario, what is it? Zuzumas gets the carry. I hit for a few yards. So it's gonna be third down and about 17. And all we have at the moment, family night will be next week. Michaud over center, three guys in the backfield. Oh, Michaud almost gets hit and the pass is incomplete. So it'll go to fourth down. Interesting to see what Lowell does here. Hey Dan, I hear the low high band. Yeah, they sound pretty good. For a small band, they do. They got about 20, 25 kids over there. They're making a pretty good sound. They do. They sound pretty good. Lots of heart, lots of brass. Get it? Lots of brass. <laughs> Yep. Fourth down and about 16. Timeout Lowell. And uh, for your uh, view and comfort, there are Jiffy Johns located at the Harrington end of the field. We're going to go down. Now to that's Sach a PSA. We're going to go down to <laughs> Sachin Nene on the field with an update. 
All right, thanks, guys. And all this this game's not going as planned. CHS Lions down 35 to 14. The swimming and diving girls team today came out strong. They are now 7-0 on the season. 200 medley relay came in first. Scarlett Quigley, Caitlin Prey, Elizabeth Price, Lindsay Clapp. 200 individual relay first. Heather Ryder came in first. 50 freestyle, Jamie Viglione came in first. And uh, in diving, Jen Casanova came in first. 100 freestyle, Stacey Alberg came in first. 500 freestyle, Z Sarah Zombach came in first. 200 freestyle relay came in first with Andrea Lee, Caitlin Prey, Sarah Powers, and Sarah Zombach. More scores later. Back to you guys. Well, that, that was appropriate, Sashin. Thanks a lot. Congratulations to the swim team. And certainly water sports is appropriate for weather like this. What you just saw in the background was uh, Lowell with an incomplete pass, turning the ball over on fourth down. And Trumps will have the ball first and 10. 3.34 left to go in the ball game. Campbell's going to be over center. Go ahead, go ahead. Dropping back to pass, looking for a receiver. Dumps it off, incomplete to Coderre. He's slow down on the field. Peter Grand, 68, the defender from Lowell on that play. Coderre's taken a number of wicked hits so far today. Look at that, the Lowell coaches are still out onto the field. That's not fair at all. Oh, Campbell no. in trouble. Oh, no. oh boy. It's only, only the first or the second time that uh, Campbell's really been pressured because he's done, the offensive line has done a good job so far. Campbell very, very much swallowed up in a sea of white shirts there. And uh, timeout Chelmsford. Lol. Well, why the, the official signaling timeout Chelmsford? I thought I heard him say lol. All right, it is timeout Chelmsford. All right, so let me just repeat for those of you here. Timeout Chelmsford. Unfortunately, you look at the field, uh, if we can get a shot of the 50 yard line maybe, you can see all the dirt on the middle of the field, which is mud, and on the sidelines especially, where all the people trample, and you know, it's... This is, I think this is one of the fears that Mr. Fletcher had when he made his decision to actually play the game. This is a lot of damage done to the grass on the field. Well, I know it's early in the season, but the field gets chewed up every year anyway. It's qu quite frankly, it gets too much use. Campbell drops back to pass, hits fielding. Oh! The hook and ladder play. <laughs> Pitches out to Morris. That was. That was certainly an interesting play. See, back in my day before the jet airplane, that was called the hook and ladder. Hook and ladder, that sounds good. That sounds appropriate. So we'll continue to use it, the hook and ladder play. Campbell, oh, right through the hands of Code Air. Number 33, Kevin Ouellette. 5'10", 180 pound junior defending for Lowell on the play. It's just a simple uh, case of, you know, the ball being wet and it going through the defender's hands. Campbell over center with Holt. Looks like fielding split the pass. It's going to be complete to nice Morris across job. the middle, and he's head for about 13, 14 yards in the first down. Chunks it in the hurry-up offense now. 2:41 left to go in the ball game. Holton Lions on the side, complete to Morris across the middle. Ahead for about 20. Well, we're looking at the uh, the slant pattern, or or whatever you want to call it. Morris coming out of the backfield and across into the middle, and he's made two receptions in a row. At this point, though, it looks like 
it looks like Lowell's into the prevent defense. They're not going to give Chelmsford anything on the sideline. Well, that's that's the point, Dan. Two. All right, Sashin, what's going on down there, buddy? All right, thanks, guys. And just to finish up all the scores in the 100 backstroke, first place, Megan Sullivan. And in the 400 freestyle relay, we came in first, Andrea Lee, Megan Sullivan, Heather Ryder, and Jamie Viglione. Also, a disappointing score right now, 35-14 lower leads. But don't forget, next week we'll be here again live against Malden Catholic. Don't miss the Lions game day, the pregame show with Dan Kachufis and me, Sachin and I. All right, back to you guys up in the booth. Well, thank you very much, Sachin. Excellent job down there. What we were saying uh, earlier, Dan, is that, that across the middle pass, pass wouldn't have worked last half because Lowe was playing a much tighter defense. But quite frankly, with 2.33 left to go, they know they can give up all the yardage in the world and even give up a score, and it's not going to make a difference. Again, you take away Ronnie Rosario, and this ball game is a completely different flavor. It's probably a 14 to 14 ball game at this point. Well, Ronnie Rosario is quite a gifted athlete, and uh, certainly Lowell's fortunate to have him playing for them. Campbell drops back to pass, looking for a receiver. He decides he's going to take it himself. He's ahead. Looks like he's going to be close to a first down. He's probably going to have it. Uh, it looks like he had across the 25-yard line, and he will have the first down. Trumps it in the hurry-up offense. They'll have a brief, and is the clock going again? 218 remains. Campbell dropping back to pass. The pass is going to be complete as Morris gets out of bounds. No, that's Eric. No, that's not Eric Khan. That's Chris Worcester on the completion. I think that's Worcester's first reception tonight, Dan. That's his first reception of the season, I believe. I don't remember calling his name uh, before, but he's he played a role last year on the team. And, you know, he's, he's a decent receiver, so I'd like to see more of him. I'm sorry, Dan. That'll bring up second and two. Being informed, that's his second completion tonight. Ah. Campbell back over center. Keeps it himself. He's rolling. He's in trouble. Being chased. The pass. Oh! In and out of the hands of, uh, of Eric Klein, I think it was. Yeah, number six, Klein. You may have heard intended for Morris over the loudspeaker, but it wasn't. It was Eric Klein. Boy, that, that, you got a whack tree. Three-way shirts putting a big whack on him there. It's going to be Timmy Lyons and Matt Holt split wide to the top of the screen, waiting for the whistle to start things up. Morrison motion. Klein's going to take, uh, not Klein, uh, Campbell. Campbell's going to take it himself. Gonna be close to a first down, but I really I don't think he has it. 158 One. remains. But they are gonna get the first down. Well, Dan, certainly the uh, crowd is cleared out quickly here. None left but the truly faithful. It's about, uh, I'd say it's about 40 degrees now, huh? Oh, it certainly is cold. This looks like, you know, this looks more like a soccer crowd. Not, not uh, putting, saying anything negative about soccer, but they don't usually get the crowds that they probably should be getting. I'm not going to help you climb out of that hole. <laughs> See a shot of the Chelmsford High School standing band. And you can hear that hole there that, you know, they don't have Mike Hall and the tuba or You're right. It's sousaphone just, or whatever. It's absolutely big white a whole piece missing out of their tone without the sousaphone. It's a shame. Tone, phone. Ha ha. I feel it like Nate Wright. Coming out, it looks like we're going to have number 88, Bill Ryder, into the ball game. 
as well as number eight, Chris Worcester. Morris is the lone man. Freshman football loses today, we're just told, 36 to six. The first loss of the season. As Campbell drops back to pass, looking for a receiver. It's gonna be picked off in the end zone by the Lowell defender, number 12. Can't find him on the roster. Moketsi Mo Molai. M-O-E-K-E-T-S-I. M-O-L-A-I. Try saying that one five times fast. Moketsi Molai, Moketsi Molai, Moketsi Molai, Moketsi Molai, Moketsi Molai. Open mouth and start foot. Uh, you had time to change feet on that one, Dan. <laughs> well, that pretty much crushes any hope Jones had had of putting a third score in. I just failed to see why Lowell's taking a timeout. They clearly, uh, without the direct intervention of the Almighty, are not going to lose this game. There's a minute 46 left to go. Chumps would need would need three touchdowns and at least a two-point conversion on one of them to win. And now you can see, unfortunately, the crowd really starting to file out. They used to sing on Monday Night Football when they had Don Meredith, turn out the lights, the party's over. Well, the party certainly is over tonight. Dan, who are we playing next week? Malden Catholic. Malden Catholic. What do we know about Malden Catholic? They're good. They're part of that. They're part of the three teams that always dominate the Catholic League in and around Boston. Uh, that includes St. John's, Xaverian, and uh, Malden Catholic usually rounds out the top three. Oh, how did we end up with them on our schedule? Needed a non-league game, and they were available, so they took them. Couldn't on we, the carry, couldn't see who it was. Couldn't we have picked up Lunenburg or maybe Littleton? Lowell Catholic. Hey, you know, Lowell Catholic, Jim DeProfio, class of 1982, is the head coach over there this year. It's their second year of varsity football, I yeah, believe? Yeah, they, they won their game last week, too. Good for them. First win in the history of the program. Good for them. I was joking with him about it uh, at church last Sunday. I said, so you've got the best winning record in the history of the school. He goes, oh. So how many Italian exchange students came over there? Oh boy. Uh, <laughs> Looks like there might be about 25 of them there. Something like that. I think they're, they're basically, they're split between here and a little Catholic high school. Oh, I think maybe some of the funnier dressed ones actually probably live here. Yeah, probably. Hey, Lowell's back out. Uh, high formation. There's the pitch. Oh, no. This is just unbelievable. It's a foot race. See if we can pick the number up on that ball carrier. That's Molai, number 12. Okay. Moketsi Molai. Molai. That's quite a run, boy. It didn't, and it's a flag on the play. Sure Probably. didn't look like he was going to be stopped. Didn't. You see Don Lacapo just running alongside him, trying to slap the ball away. And, uh... What? They're mocking the, mocking the penalty off against Chelmsford. We've seen no uh, indication as to what it might be. I'm guessing maybe a face mask. The three Chelmsford uh, defenders Red brought ball, him down. Personal foul, defense, first off. Well, I guess wrong once again, Dan. Personal foul, face mask, same results, 15 yards. Number 75 for the Lions, Sean Nihan, Nihan, H-N-I-H-A-N. Nihan. Sean Nihan checking in for the Lions. Time out have been expended by Chelmsford. Time out, Chelmsford, 114 to go. 35 to 14 the score. 
Jeff Stella, Dean Katrufus, and whoever's left here at Alumni Stadium. Clock ticking down to one minute left to go in the ball game, 35 to 14. If you're just tuning in, Chelmsford on the wrong end of the score here tonight. It'll be second and 13 for Lowell. Throw it back to my battery mate here, Dan Kachufis, who's going to bring you the play-by-play. -play. Over center, that looks like 89. i got to turn my roster for that one. 89? 80, 80, excuse me. Tom Boyle. Oh, taken down by Warshawski in the backfield. That was Malai, the ball Thank carrier. Warshawski was looking to do an in, to do a, uh, he was looking to make a statement, and I think he did. Well, I might remember number 55 in his sleep tonight. Oh, either that or have an imprinted on his forehead or something. <laughs> yeah, another timeout on the field called by. No, that's a game. That's the ball game. That's a ball game. That's game. Looks, like, looks like the, the uh, timekeeper had the Boston Garden finger on him. <laughs> I haven't heard that in a while. Ladies and gentlemen, the final score. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is the ball game. The score, 35 for the Lowell Red Raiders, 14 for the Chumster Lions. Not what we'd hope to have happen tonight. Unfortunately, I think, as you'll agree, Dan, Ronnie Rosario, the difference in the ball game here tonight. Ronnie Rosario certainly was the difference in the ball game. Uh, can't tell how many yards he had, but he had a lot of them. And uh, he had, he, oh boy, he had three touchdowns he scored by himself. At least, yeah. Three touchdowns, so. So I think we're safe in uh, playing, uh, naming Ronnie Rosario Lowell Player of the Game. I'd say we're going to name Ronnie Rosario from Lowell Player of the Game. What about Chelmsford Player of the Game, Dan? Chelmsford Player of the Game, none other than, I think I'm going to give it to Morris today. I, you know, I think I have to agree. Number think, five, Chris Morris. Uh, Chumpswood's uh, do all back tonight. Certainly uh, providing a lot of the offense this evening and taking some terrific wax uh, in payment for it. Well, uh, certainly he had a good game, but that's going to do it here from Alumni Stadium.